gender differences exist, but how does aging impact the brain in men and women from a neuroscience perspective? Here to share more specifically about the female brain ahead of International Women's Day is neurotechnologist and TED speaker, Sarah Baldeo. Good morning, Sarah. Always great to see and talk to you. Good morning, Kim. Great to be back. So how do biological aging markers affect men and women differently from a, a neuroscience perspective? So we all know that men and women are different. Uh, what we see in women is a steep decline in estrogen as they start to go through perimenopause. And this does impact the brain in women very, very differently, particularly when it comes to memory and emotional processing. Uh, and so this explains why, you know, women start to feel a lot of frustration as they're as they're aging. It's the steep decline in estrogen. Men have a more gradual decline in testosterone. And so their brain ages in a more gradual way. Uh, and what we see in men is they start to struggle with movement control and spatial awareness, which might explain why as men get older, they're even less likely to uh, stop and ask for directions. And it's not as simple as saying, you know, who ages better from a neurological lens. Women actually maintain a better connectivity between the two hemispheres of their brain than men do. And so there's definitely differences that we see from these hormonal fluctuations in women versus men, and they're not necessarily better or worse. Hmm, that is fascinating. So why do our brains still respond uh, strongly to evolutionary fertility signals despite modern social progress? So the analogy I like to use, Kim, is you can think of it as this ancient hardware, which, believe it or not, is your brain running on, it's trying to run a modern software. That's basically what you're dealing with. Thousands of years ago, the most important, valuable trait was how fertile a person was. And in women, that often meant things like looking at the hip to waist ratio that a woman had, which meant that she was more likely to be a successful reproductive mate. For men, the greatest indicator was their physical brute strength. And so despite the fact that we like to think we're very, very evolved, those ancient evolutionary mechanisms that happen in the brain, they still exist. And so we are still very, very actively um, fighting them. And this creates an interesting tension between you know, the mechanism of your brain and those evolutionary traits uh, and sociologically, where we're trying to evolve and value people for different things other than making people. Now, how can we understand the neuroscience behind society's shifting values about aging and attractiveness? So, you know, we still have those primitive um, neural circuits, but there is a part of your brain that I talk about called the prefrontal cortex. It controls executive function. And it is where you can really challenge your brain to start valuing, you know, especially women, uh, regardless of how old they are. And the best way to do this is to expose yourself to different kinds of beauty across the life cycle, not just, you know, youth. Um, and fertility markers. And so one of the interesting things we see specifically in Gen Z and younger people, we look at their brains and MRIs and they don't respond to beauty and youth in the same way that their parents do. They actually tend to value people regardless of how young or you know, fertile a person might look. And so we do see it changing over generations. Now, we don't have a lot of time on this, but neuro what does neuroscience tell us about adapting our value systems in a post-reproductive focused society? So I think I keep saying to people, you know, challenge yourself, challenge those evolutionary mechanisms. The brain can always change. It is neuroplastic. And especially as we come up to International Women's Day, try to look at women beyond, you know, youth and fertility. And you can change the way your brain processes information. Sarah, I want to thank you so much. You always give us something fascinating to think about, uh, and especially ahead of International Women's Day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. You too. Thanks, Kim. If Take you'd care. like to connect with Sarah, you can go to sarahbaldeo.com.